So my next guest is from Sweden and he's moved all the way over to Switzerland. And uh, in between that, he had a 20 year corporate career and then gave that all up to found an online entrepreneur community called Entnest, uh, which he describes as the virtual Swiss army knife for your whole entrepreneurial journey, connecting the silos and simplifying how you find the right resources to help you achieve success faster. And his name is Johan Francine, and he's our next guest. Let's have a listen. This is the Expat Business Hero Podcast, and I'm your host, Alex Congdon. So, Johan, great to see you on the show. Fantastic to have you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Alex. Always good to see you too. (laughs) (laughs) So, Johan, you're originally from Sweden, but you're now based in Geneva in Switzerland. So we mustn't confuse these two countries. I know they sound very similar. You know, one's got lots of snow and mountains and skiing, and the other one has lots of snow, mountains, and skiing. Okay, but they are different. <laughs> I, I just know people that, try, that like to confuse. Them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's absolutely true. Even Spotify, which is a Swedish company, uh, they were announced in Nasdaq with a Swiss flag. So, oh dear. yeah, it's a tricky one. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah, before we talk about your past, I just want to refer a little bit about, you know, about your what's on your website, entnest.com. You've got this strap line there, which says, create your future with trusted people and tools. I hope I've got that the right way around. So yeah. perhaps you could just explain to, to everybody, you know, what that means and perhaps explain more about the frustrations that you sensed were out there that prompted you to start this, this community and this network. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, right now there's so many different networks uh, for all kinds of different audiences, right? And I felt that um, there is a space which was empty for people who want to really create their own future and which has a combination of both community elements and marketplace. Many of the places today are either a community or a marketplace, but it's not that many that combines those two. So uh, we think that uh, the, the creation element is quite a key one. I think also overall, the number of entrepreneurs are seriously going up everywhere, but the percent of successful entrepreneurs is not really going up. So uh, yeah, it's important to try and provide a little bit extra support, I think, to the people who want to create their own future rather than, for instance, wanting to find their next career step, which is... Uh, a big element there out there also. If you look at the word trust, then I think trust is the new currency. Yeah, we need to do a little bit better work at really being able to trust the different profiles. We all, I'm sure, receive uh, all kinds of strange messages from people who we, yeah, in many cases, certainly don't want to trust. But it's a matter of making sure that we have that community of people who really can trust each other. So, so Entnest, as you mentioned, That's the company name. Ent is short for entrepreneurs. Nest is the home of entrepreneurs. Um, so, so yeah. we, taking a step back, then who this yeah. is, who is this for? That yeah, was, so that was my you know the big question, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Entnest is for three different types of people and organizations. The first is aspiring entrepreneurs. It can be uh, students. It can be people working in the big multinationals but having thoughts regarding or ideas about a different way of how they want to live and create their future. And the second group is then um, startups, people who have actually taken the plunge and and moved forward. And the third group, um, it's a lot of different support organizations out there. Frankly, there are millions of resources out there, and they're each in an individual silo. And this is actually part of the issue that there's not really too much handshaking going on. So if you're, for instance, sitting in one co-working space, you're hopefully well connected within that silo. But just next door, there's most likely, and today there's a a co-working space is popping up everywhere. So there's a co-working space in the next quarter. And if it's from a different branch, then of course, you're not automatically connected to them while there would be great opportunities most likely for you uh, if you simply were connected with them. So Entnest is the overall umbrella connecting across those different networks or platforms or silos. 
Okay, so it's a, it's a it's a place for entrepreneurs to to find tools, resources, but most most importantly, to connect with other people as well. Absolutely, the connection is an excellent uh, and very very important piece. Having a network and really taking those connections and uh, taking actions and also having the accountability in between the different parties. I'm I'm in some of the other big networks, platforms, and so on, and I'm part in different groups of 10, 20, 50,000, even half a million members. And for me, at least, it's not really happening. Everybody is simply selling, but there's there's no buying going on, or at least it's not very vis- visible and, and uh, obvious. So I think there needs to be a balance, uh, supply and demand, offers and needs, right? And if, if you don't have the, the balance, then, uh, yeah, it will, it will crash. Uh, nothing will happen. So, and many of those other networks, it's about looking good. Me pushing forward, me, myself, and I, right? And I think it's much, much more powerful to, to start from the other side of the same coin. Um, here I am. Maybe I need uh, who can be my great uh, accountant in Geneva or in New York or in Stockholm or whatever. And then maybe somebody can recommend me that guy or who can help me with my logo design or whatever it is, right? If I want to make, uh, I have a a brownie um, bakery in Geneva and if I would want to set up a, a, a franchise in Paris, who can be a great person for connecting with for for achieving that for instance i mean it's a lot of questions like that that uh, you don't really get resolved in many of the other places so my yeah maybe we're getting into a little bit more of my background and so on there also no but, it's okay it, it, it's yeah. okay i mean you you um you touched on three things that you, you touched on in your new york stockholm geneva <laughs> what my point was that, that this is global isn't it i mean it sounds like you've got a big vision here and i'd love to hear what the big overall vision is here because yeah. you're, not, you're not aiming low, I don't think so. Not you. And no, for sure. I'm <laughs> aiming very, very big, but we are in reality pretty local at this point. We worked on it for a long time, but absolutely uh, crucial. This is intended to be uh, a global uh, venture here. And we do have the majority of the members around Geneva, Lausanne, but we already have members from more than 40 countries, which I'm, I'm very, very pleased with. But it's also a case where we don't want to try to fly before we even can walk or run, right? So we're, we're taking it slow. We are in, in the start, startup phase here. And uh, 2019 will be a very, very important year. We have worked a long time on the technical side of building this up. And uh, now comes the marketing element. So it's going to be very exciting. Now, you've got a great corporate background. And how, how has that helped you, having that background, that leadership background in you know, building a team, leading the projects, and making progress on this, this you know, very ambitious project? Yeah, there, it's helped me in a number of different uh, big ways. And of course, I'm, I'm a little bit older. I have the gray matter on the outside of my head. No, no, nobody can see that, don't worry. <laughs> But when I started in uh, in university and so on, then we all wanted to work for the biggest and the best companies. Uh, that was my time at university. And I started working for one of the big multinationals. Um, it's a lot of internal training. They have all the procedures and uh, all the different functions and so on. It's a, a matter of team working and so on there. And those were all great elements, right? But now, if you look at the, the younger generation and uh, people going to the universities and so on, uh, most of them actually are much, much more interested in creating their own future rather than starting for the big multinationals. It's an excellent school with the bigger organizations that are settled in uh, and so on there, but it's a completely different drug. Uh, when you are in the corporate uh, side and the rat race, and uh, of course you need to do whatever you can to uh, live up to the expectations, preferably beat the expectations, of course. Yeah. Uh, and that goes both for the organizational element and for the financial elements. I mean, how has it helped you, though, practically for this project? Because, as I said, you've got all this experience. Is it? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my um, expertise uh, was within strategic sourcing logistics and so on so one piece was of course finding the right uh, team i'm working with an external uh, supplier so this was part of my expertise and i'm very very proud to have found an excellent group in india who does all the technical development uh, for antnest 
but otherwise just uh, motivation and aspirations. I think you, you need to be able to assist and make sure that the team really can deliver on all cylinders, uh, whatever it is that, uh, that is needed. And at this point, it has been less about uh, having a full-fledged team of all the different functions that you normally have within the big organizations since we are in a startup uh, situation, right? So, but it's still always about being able to judge character and finding really the right personality and they should, of course, not be the same as you, right? I mean, you need to have diversity and being able to make sure that you can really cover all, all bases, all angles uh, in a good way. And don't think that you can be an expert on everything yourself. You really have to rely on people from different sides and with different uh, experiences and so on. So I think that's, that's a really big uh, element. And uh, in the company that I was working for, we had, uh, I think, a lot of very good diversity. And I appreciated. Uh, I mean, I stayed with them for 20 years, even though I knew after 10 that I probably want to leave at one point in time. But uh, 20 years is a, is a long time. You can, say who, employer. <laughs> you can say who it was, don't worry. There, I think we had many uh, listeners from that organization here. It was, yeah, no, uh, it was Procter & Gamble. And uh, I mean, it's, it was, I think it still is uh, quite a an excellent company but of course it has its challenges and in today's world it's a challenge and i think also if you look at the fact that all the companies are looking at the bottom line right and people feel more and more nowadays that there needs to be a higher purpose for the company on top of just the shareholder value right so and that was also part of why i felt ownership and passion and so on for all the things that i was involved in there but still it is a different situation compared to trying to do something off your your own, and it was part of the beauty of what I what I wanted to try and achieve. Yeah, and I think with this project now with Entnest, I mean, it's a purpose driven project. And, very much so. Very much so. And I think today, people who are joining the workforce, starting businesses, they're a lot more in tune with purpose driven organizations. So I think absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine great. if one of the other big, and I don't want to name too many organizations and so on here, but just think about all the other social networks and different marketplaces and so on. Who earns the most money from you being active in there? I think it's it's the network itself, right? So within Entnest, one of the first big pillars of purpose is we commit to give at least 51% of our future profit back to the eligible Entnesters. I think that can be a, a really powerful element here and a total change versus what uh, what we're seeing in the world today. Fantastic. Yeah. And of course, based on that and what we already mentioned in terms of trusts and so on there, trust is a big element. Um, a big thing within Entnest is that we are and will forever be based on invitation or recommendation only. So in order for you to get inside, uh, you will have to have a recommendation or an invitation there. And you can always see who invited who. So you can follow the trail between the different people and, and see who has invited who. And I think that's, it's very powerful. Fantastic. Well, we'll talk yeah. more about that at the end, but uh, yeah. Good, yeah. good to know. So tell us about the journey here then. You, you know, we mentioned before that you're from Sweden and you're in Switzerland now. So how did you end up in Switzerland? What was the... Yeah, so I did university in Sweden, and after university, I started working for Procter & Gamble up in Sweden. I had the chance of moving down to Germany first, which was the one of the headquarters for P&G at that point in time. Um, pretty soon after I had moved there, uh, we decided to consolidate the different headquarters in Europe, and we moved that down to Geneva. So I moved down to Geneva, of course, also with Procter & Gamble, and this is where I spent most of my years, and uh, Geneva is an excellent place, and uh, we, uh, we love it. We're still staying around, even though I left six years ago now. Uh, I have a Swedish wife, and we have two boys, uh, 24 and 19. Both of them have actually left the home now, and actually both of them are up in the Netherlands. And the oldest one has ended his uh, bachelor and started his own company. So I guess he's uh, taking after his father to some extent there then. 
Yeah, dangerous thing. <laughs> and the young one has just started on his uh, bachelor at the Erasmus University, also up there in Rotterdam. So fantastic! So you're empty nesters then? So exactly, maybe. exactly. Okay. At home, it's a completely different. Uh, we we are very uh, very spoiled and happy. Also, after the kids have uh, have moved out, but okay. it's a very different lifestyle, of course, uh, that too. So tell us about this transition, because we, you know, you in. Um Something's driven you to go from this, this uh, the corporate drug, as you call it, <laughs> to yeah. this entrepreneurial yeah. drug. Yeah. So yeah. What, uh, what is that? What did that mean for you, that, that transition? Uh, well, uh, what it meant was really relearning a lot of different things and uh, really uh, a different drug has different uh, <laughs> implications, I guess. I mean, when you are in a big company, of course, the fact that you have all kinds of different functions and big teams and so on around you, you are doing your piece, your one, one element in a big machine, right? And that was really the biggest and uh, the hardest learning, I would say, at the beginning then, where you're jumping into the cold water and uh, you better learn to swim very fast. And yeah, it's, it's a challenge. And I think also it's, uh, it's tricky because it's so overwhelming. There are millions of resources and uh, it's all trying to assist you, but uh, it's very hard to take it in and know what is good. And uh, if I need something like this, then should I go this way or should I go that way? So it was a, a lot of relearning, I would say. I was going to ask you that now. In fact, yeah. what were the, the personally for you the biggest struggles as you were setting up the business? Uh, I would say, um, yeah, I mean, in the business for the the big corporate, most of the things were outlined, right? Of course, we were working on the strategies and on the details and so on, but it was still to a large extent after we had gone quite far. Procter & Gamble is uh, yeah, more than 150 years old. And yes, we develop new brands and all kinds of different things. But uh, Entnest is uh, zero, it was zero years old, right? So it's a matter of really starting from the bottom. And uh, as said, when you're in a big company, you normally have your expertise function and so on. And mine was within strategic sourcing, supply chain management, overall logistics, and so on. And um, I had never been in sales or marketing or legal or HR or anything like that, right? So there was a lot of... Uh, a, bit, a bit lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit lonely. But I think also you have to be open and realistic that you can never be an expert by yourself on everything, right? So this is one of the key recommendations, I would say, for people who think that Maybe they, uh, they have a, a great idea, but they're, they're too concerned about sharing it uh, with different people and fear of others sort of ripping their idea and so on. But I think it's uh, what I'm saying normally is the idea is basically worthless until you can really prove that you can implement uh, and move forward on it. And that's when it starts to become interesting. So at the beginning, I would definitely recommend almost sharing with as many as you can. And you, even no matter how much you, you share about it there, it's still in your head and you won't be able to put all your ideas around it in one piece. So I think there's very, very little risk that you will feel ripped off. And uh, if you can rather get a team of different people, different functions who can assist, you have a much, much better chance of, of succeeding. And of course, once you want to go for funding and everything, it's, it's much stronger to, to show that you have a team rather than that here's a, an individual uh, crazy entrepreneur, right? You need to be able to show that you can work together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so building a team obviously was a, was a, was a huge thing as you, as you yeah. were going through. And this yeah. idea of validating the idea, I mean, was that, was that difficult as well at the beginning? Because obviously you had this idea in your head, but you had to go out and prove that, that it had legs. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely true. But I would even take one step further back first, because when uh, after 10 years that I started thinking that, yeah, I do want to uh, move to something new, I started already planning. And uh, my thinking was creating a consultancy firm within my area of expertise. Um, so that's what I moved forward on. I did all the work and so on for that. But in the process of doing that, I talked with so many other aspiring entrepreneurs, established entrepreneurs, and support organizations. And we all said the same thing. It's way too difficult. So there needs to be a better way, of uh, an easier way for entrepreneurs to become uh, successful or having a better shot at becoming successful. So 
yeah, I had basically validated the idea of the consulting, but instead of knocking on the door for the Regis de le Commerce and so on for that, I decided, hey, this is, this is too good of an opportunity to miss. So I put that on the shelf. It's still on the shelf. And I moved forward with this Entnest idea because of uh, all the issues that I saw out there. So the validation was almost part of the, the absolute initial idea creation there, right? The, the fact that, yeah, it's, uh, it, there are all these different silos and so on, and we need to make it uh, an umbrella element in there and connecting across all of those different things. But I worked with a lot of different people, uh, a number of different mentors at different stages, people who had excellent experiences from each of the different elements in there. And uh, because, as, as we said, you can't be an expert on everything. So uh, talk to the people who are interested and uh, utilize uh, the expertise of people who have had the, the right experience, right? You, you wouldn't talk uh, a hairstyle with your accountant, right? So it's... Uh, <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I was going to ask you that question about the support you got. So you, you, yeah. know, you mentioned mentors or experts that you've worked with, which is fantastic. And, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that when you're setting up a new business, becoming an entrepreneur, yeah. um, it's a new career and yeah. you need to reach out and tap into the expertise of people who've been there before. Um, yeah. Because, you know, it, just to save you time and money, I think. It's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can't be an expert on, on everything I said. And uh, it's not only while you're in school that uh, that is good to have teachers, right? I mean, even Roger Federer, I'm sure, has a, a guy for improving his backhand, right? Or, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. I think uh, uh, teachers, uh, mentors, uh, coaches, whatever you call them, right? I mean, even the biggest uh, business gurus i'm i'm quite sure that they have people that they want to use for uh, discussions and so on there and i think it's it's always much more powerful you can be good maybe even great by yourself but you can definitely not be excellent you have to have people around you so it's the key piece my children keep asking me you know so when are we going to stop learning at school and i said and i tell them well listen i'm still learning i'm, I'm still <laughs> learning and i I'm not, I'm not so sure if that's an encouraging thing to tell them because they go oh my god is it yeah is it gonna, never gonna stop and i said yeah exactly L L L. so lifelong learning right so it's not only the www for World Wide web but uh, lifelong learning for sure is uh, is really crucial and i think it's more about that whole journey the, the building the experience as you move forward and of course you pick up and hopefully maybe you can drop a few things and so on also, but uh, it's a, it's a long and winding road. And it's, I would say also within the, the corporate and other elements, it's, it's a roller coaster ride there too, but I think the roller coaster is much smoother within the big companies. And uh, when you are an entrepreneur, uh, you will have very high peaks and very low valleys on that journey, I can tell you. And yeah, so it's important. And it's, of course, uh, very important also to have supporting people around you. I mean, I would never have been able to do this uh, unless my wife would let me basically write and really be supportive and so on there. So Fantastic. I appreciate that. Uh, well, really let's, acknowledge, let's acknowledge her here and say thank you to her. Yes. Honestly. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, when you wrote to me, you, you, you gave me this amazing quote, which I just want to share now. And that was a sh- in shared happiness is double the happiness and shared burden is half the burden. Yeah. Brilliant. Could you expand on that and what you mean? Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that's really what it is, right? I mean, if you can share the opportunities and so on there, the happiness uh, of progress and so on, the whole team is going to get uh, so much happier. And uh, if you have an issue, if you can really uh, sort that out by putting a few more hands uh, into it, it's going to get so much easier. So, uh, yeah, everything comes back to, to really uh, connections, networking, finding the right people. I would also say, nothing is stronger than its weakest link. I mean, the weakest link is a TV series, of course, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's really a true statement. So uh, you need to find the right people, the positive people that can bring energy to, to the table rather than, uh, than taking it. And uh, um, we need to be realistic, of course, but uh, it's very important also to shoot for, for the stars and, and have a, a vision and uh, if you're going to deliver something really great, it's not sufficient to just look around your feet, right? You have to lift your eyes a little bit further. 
That's great. That's a great, that's a great lesson. And I think that yeah. um, it's a big encouragement for entrepreneurs starting up. Um, also yeah. a lesson to remember that there's no such thing as a self-made entrepreneur. Absolutely. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a load of rubbish. You have to, you have yeah. to help people. You have yeah. to let people help you in your, in yeah. your journey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think with what you're creating at that platform is, is, is really encouraging that. So that's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so are there any other, perhaps one or two key learnings that you've, picked up on on this journey that you think you could pass on to someone that's uh, setting up a business someone that's perhaps uh, you know away from their home country anything that would encourage them on a, on a practical basis that uh, perhaps you could share well i think we've mentioned a number of things i love different big quotes there i think another one uh, a rising tide lifts all the boats i think i actually picked that up from milita campbell who is one of your previous uh, uh, people on this show and i really like her a lot i've connected with her since the interview that you did with her oh, fantastic um, yeah it really is about those uh, those connections there and connecting with the right people don't spend your energy on on people who are sort of not interested or having uh, not the right experience that uh, that you're looking for the weakest Link we mentioned. I think trust is the new currency. Is quite clearly uh, you need to build on that. Uh, maybe another one. Um, I think coding is really a superpower. We haven't talked about that. Wow. Of course, my uh, the Entnest is a lot about the technicalities of uh, the yeah the digital side of it. So uh, I would urge anybody. Uh, I think it goes for no matter what you want to do in the future. Coding is a superpower. Uh, so I'm absolutely not an expert. I've never done any of it, but I have picked up a few things. And when I started, I looked around uh, WordPress and started doing a few things and seeing if this could work for me. And I very quickly realized that, yeah, I have the gray matters on the outside of my head nowadays. You realize it was a superpower best in the hands of a... Yeah, somebody who can expert. manage that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, that kryptonite, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, anything really. If you, can, if you can think it, then it can be created. Also, uh, action is quite a key element. Uh, and I think a lot of people are talking... Uh, actually, I came up with the idea for Netflix, but... I could, of course, never uh, do it, right? So I think we all have great ideas, but as long as you can't really implement it, it's not going to be worth anything, right? Absolutely. So kudos to the people who actually do take the action and get things done. And uh, becoming and being accountable, I think, is another piece. I mean, today there's too little action and too little accountability. So we need to build a little bit further in, in those two fields and yeah, uh, if you're in a big group in, in one of the other networks and so on, I think it's, it's very difficult to get really to the accountability. I think people are still hunter-gatherers to a, a large extent. And if you have a small group of, I don't know, 10 or 20 people, an effective wolf pack, then you will keep each other honest and accountable, right? So if I tell you by next week, I'm going to have my new logo for my company. Uh, and uh, you ask me the next time, then I'm much more inclined to actually have it done rather than me sort of sit sitting there in my own chamber. And uh, yeah, I, I should actually have a new logo. But yeah. That's you a great one. To, you have to I mean, how did you manage that for yourself? How, how did you keep uh, yourself... <laughs> Accountable. Accountable. Well, it comes back to the team again and making sure that you have a roadmap a plan of what you want to achieve by when and it's not about uh, notoriously keeping to to everything and just because you said i mean things change also right you need to be adaptable and agile to to do different things there but still at least having something that points in the direction where you're going and of course, I, I think also it depends on what kind of company you're trying to start. If it is another restaurant or uh, something completely new and novel or, or whatever. I mean, the question is also, do you need a map or do you need a compass? So I think you need to consider different uh, things like that. Also, we, we, we know that we're going in this particular direction. But uh, yeah, there can be lots of valleys and mountains in between, as I said. And many times that then that you feel that yeah i've reached the top of this mountain here now but it's only from the top that you see the next mountain that you didn't even realize was there uh, afterwards right so you have to basically go from first having some insight on an issue developing your idea 
coming up with a plan, validating it, uh, and so on, right? And those are all different uh, mountains. So I refer to me basically as the entrepreneurship mountain guide, right? And that's, uh, that's what I think uh, we're like trying sh- to do. Like a Sherpa. Exactly, exactly. We're assisting with carrying and Entnest, Entnest is basically the virtual Swiss army knife there for you then, right? So it's a toolbox of different elements and just because it's there, it doesn't mean that you have to utilize it all at the same time, right? So it's like a buffet table. Just because it's there. Made that you need. Exactly, exactly. So now I want to go to an event. What are the events uh, that I can mm. uh, look at uh, today instead of trying to look all over internet and, and try and find uh, whatever it is. It's uh, probably like that. Anything that makes our lives simpler. Exactly. Fast That's, the execute. That's all great stuff for, for entrepreneurs. So yeah. 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 Listen, Johan, what's coming up next? What, what are you planning for the future? What are your goals? Around, yeah. Around yeah. So, so, so far we've been focusing on um, basically staying under the radar and uh, focusing geographically on Geneva and surroundings, but uh, we're coming up towards 2019. And during 2019, we have uh, set a target of 10 different countries where we want to really focus on. So, of course, first uh, going beyond Geneva and Lausanne in Switzerland, but then also going to further countries. We have already approached uh, the next country which will be the netherlands by the way that we will be focusing on of course we're not excluding anybody so if anybody is interested from any country then of course that's uh, quite possible but our focus area would be uh, a couple of the small countries uh, going forward we're not shooting for the big ones i think another interesting element is uh, a lot of people talk about getting an mvp a minimum viable product out there as soon as possible I think there's risks with that also. You can, I think, quite easily yeah, damage your own idea and the vision and so on by people not understanding what it is that you try to achieve. So putting something out there too quick, I think, is dangerous. And that's also why we're not going to target the US or England or Germany or France or so in, in the next uh, round. We're shooting for a few of the smaller countries first to make sure that we have really got our stuff together and that uh, it will work and so on, and then building further from there. I think that's more safe, yeah. Sounds like you have a plan, which is fantastic. (laughs) I do, yeah. We're happy about that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, very exciting year, 2019. I think this is the year when it will happen and uh, we will move forward uh, big time. Well, at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned that people can actually um, have a look at the system. It's on an invitation basis only, but there is a way for them to yeah. um, get your attention. So what would you suggest if someone's interested to find out more? Where should they go and what should they do? Yeah, so the website is uh, entnest.com. That's where you go. It's a very simple page that you arrive at. And you have two buttons, basically apply or log in. And... Um, Uh, You can click on the apply and in there then you fill in a few of the details. But in order for you to actually see the inside, you have to have somebody recommending you. So if you go in, apply and search for recommenders and you search for Entnest, you will find my profile. And if you have written a bit about yourself in there, then I will put my trust in you. And I will approve that and I will yeah, they can, uh, make sure that we can see how we can move forward. So aspiring mention, entrepreneurs, yeah. They can mention that, you know, you heard, heard about it on the podcast. And so they'll get Absolutely. your attention and they'll, they'll be able to get yeah. in. Okay. Yeah. And I'm really pleased, of course, to see uh, you in there also. And yep, I think there's well. a lot of opportunities for you to continue to do interviews with a Absolutely. number of interesting entrepreneurs. And you've already done, done a number of them, I think, in there. So that's really, really excellent. Indeed. And yeah. I'm going to put that website on the show notes as well when we, when we put the episode out so everyone can yeah. see that. But um, fantastic. Listen, Johan, I just want to say thank you and acknowledge what you're doing. I think you're doing a fantastic job. I think you're doing it for reasons well, you know, much bigger than yourself. Um, it's a great thing that you're doing. So I want to say, you know, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, let's do this again sometime in the future. I'm sure we'll, you'll be in a completely different stage. But uh, Thank you again so much for coming on and talking about your uh, your experience. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. This was excellent. So I look forward to our next talk and uh, hearing a number of your other podcasts. I think they are very, very good and uh, very insightful and always good to get the learnings from the other people too.
Brilliant. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Thank you very much. Take care.